All right, so my correct speed sensor is finally here. The part that I was actually waiting on. So here's the electrical component. This part I didn't, I don't think I need, but I got a new one. And then this here is the bushing. And then this is the gear I needed. So this gear, I pulled the other one out, you'll see. It was all worn out. So I think it maybe got seized and then the other worm gear or whatever wore it down. So it's no longer catching and then it was sort of no longer sending a uh, signal to the dash. So I'm going to pull the other one out, put this one in and hopefully, hopefully I didn't mess up the dash by uh, taking it apart twice. Just removing screws, looking at things I should be looking at. So hopefully it's all good. So let's see if this works. Anyway, so here it is, right here at the end of the transmission. Uh, this is the plug-in for the wire that goes to the dash. This is the electrical component. Here's a clip that holds the bushing in. So I just gotta remove this one bolt and pull it out. Okay. Get that up out of the way. Got a little catch down here. Woo, some transmission fluid. <laughs> okay, so you can see here where the groove got cut away on the teeth on the gear. So yeah, this is a 16 tooth gear and it has an M on it. So I don't know if that's for the manual transmission or what. But yeah, 16 tooth. And it is like so worn down right there. So anyways, I need to um, try to get this bushing off here pretty quick. Or I mean, sorry, the, um, the O-ring gasket and put it on here because I had this piece, but I had it in the bag with my other power steering and stuff and it blew away. So then I reused it, it looks good still seals, so we'll just get it off carefully. Thank God. Okay, that probably stretched it out a little bit though. So I think this port allows transmission fluid to go in there and grease the uh, spindle. But I'm not positive. But it looks definitely there's like a screen filter in there. So it must allow something to get in there and keep, keep this loop so it doesn't seize. Because I think that might have been a problem here. It might have seized it and then just kept, got gnarled. All right, let me try to my best to get this back in there. Okay, I try to get a good shot there for you. So you can see that little side gear. That's what's supposed to mesh with the plastic cog and spin it the right rotations to send it to the dash. Yeah, I hope you can see. I just want to get this thing in there. Oh. Okay, I have no idea if you saw that footage. My GoPro was getting all mixed up, hitting the, hitting everything under here. So yeah, just got it, the round end lined up there. And so the bracket that holds this flat part, so this doesn't spin in place and everything lined up. You see there's a little notch up here. I'm thinking that's the right placement. So I already lined up the bracket and the screw hole fits perfect for the bolt to go in. So let me fasten that and I'll get the uh, component on and I think we'll be able to give this a shot. Okay, yeah, so like I said, you wanna get that tooth lined up with that notch on the inner sub part of the gear arm so that because that's what spins it there we go oh, hold up <laughs> gotta get the bracket on okay i got it around enough Plug it back in. 
All right, I swear to God, I really, 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 really hope this works. I'm really tired of not having a speedometer. It is not good. I don't like being able to not being able to track my miles, oil changes, that kind of stuff. I'm never gonna speed, so that's not the issue. <laughs> but yeah, just want it working. Okay, moment of truth. First time shot. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh man, I'm so scared. So yeah, this is gonna be a very disappointing reaction or like a very excited. Well, I don't need my belt really. So here we go. Loving it. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. So it's been out since August. I was going down to um, Northeast Auto Imports for them to fix my four wheel drive. And it went out then. And so what is it now? It's almost the end of October. So that's a while. <laughs> I got the GPS on just so I can make sure it's reading proper, but it looks like it is. You're going back between kilometers and miles per hour. So anyways, that's a good fix. I'll see what else I can tie into this video. But um, I'm really excited about this. Can't Honestly, I can't believe it. I didn't think it was gonna work. Okay, so now it's next job. This is what I've been waiting to do for a while, is fiberglass over these old fridge vents. I don't need any more. Here's my, this is my 12 volt fridge right here, Dometic. So these are useless, just that's cold air and water in. All right, yeah, this is like the cheapest plastic ever made. <laughs> or it is 20 years, 30 years later. So I can't wait to get rid of it. Duct tape. <laughs> duct tape holding it on. Disgusting. All right, now to grind out a little bit of an edge. Pretty much just gonna go right past these screw holes and do a slight ramp. Again, so I can build up uh, the fiberglass sheets, try to make it level. All right, so here's a slab of poly wall. I'm gonna tape in from the inside. First, I'm gonna cover it in parchment paper because the resin and fiberglass won't stick to this. So it'll be easy to remove from the back once it, uh, the fiberglass dries. Okay, I hope that's good enough. All right, so you see the little tiny ramp. Probably should have been a little bit more of a steep area. Maybe a little bit extended, but I'm gonna go with it. So yeah, that's just the poly wall taped up and little cardboard braces just to keep it as flat as possible. This isn't gonna be perfect, I don't really care. But I just wanna get them sealed up. Okay, for the first installment, I'm gonna cut out the sheets. I have the sheets over there. But I'm gonna use this one, 406 Kaleido, Kaleidical Silica. Uh, that's like a thickener, so it'll help it not sag, and it'll be a little bit more structural to start off with. And then just the 206 and 105 hardener and epoxy, one pump each. Mix it up, mix this in real nice, and let me uh, cut out the sheets. Okay, so I also cut out a template to match this. So the idea is cut out multiple pieces, but have the largest one first, and then 
layer the smaller ones in the center and that should level it out for the ramps and then this first piece will keep it all structure within the wall and then if you layer it in the smaller pieces it'll bring it to the same level and be structural so we'll give our best shot not gonna be perfect <laughs> Okay, here we go. I'm gonna make a pretty good batch. So I'm gonna do four squirts, see how much we got. One. Mm. Let's go five. So you wanna stir this up first and then add this stuff. Okay, now to add a few tablespoons of this. Just a bunch. <laughs> okay, you see we got a pretty much a peanut butter consistency. This is good because uh, I got to fill in some of these cracks between this and that, um, the backing plate and the fiberglass. So I'm gonna layer all this up, maybe fill it in here too, and then stick both the fiberglass sheets over top of this. I try to use most of this and then I'll get another batch of um, less thickener to wet it out and layer it up and layer it up. So let's just get this going. Okay, I wasn't sure what exactly to use. My last time I used a bristle brush, it didn't really go that smooth. So I grabbed this foam brush. See if that's any better. Okay, now for the first sheet. stuff I have here might be a little too thick. And yeah. Damn it. <laughs> this will help. Okay, now I have this Brown hued stuff, the micro filler flare. This helps you sand it down a little bit better. So these are like the last couple sheets I'm putting on tonight. So I've got to sand it down a little bit easier. Okay, so I got it kind of taped off last night and threw it out as best I could. Uh, but it's kind of hard now, so first round's done, so I'm going to remove this tape. And next job is going to be sanding and then filling it in with some more fiberglass. OK, 
okay right now it's hideous it's gonna take a lot more work sanding painting <laughs> all right now i have some 80 grit sandpaper i'm gonna try to level all this out and then add a few more layers of fiberglass sand that down then some filler sand that again so let's just try to make it look better Uh, you can see it's a little bit smoother. I don't know if you can still see it on the camera or whatever, but I don't know, half an hour at least on this. And it's fairly smooth. You can see where I cut the ramp. So yeah, once I do more filler and layer some more fiberglass and paint it, it shouldn't be too bad. Now to do this one, you can see the difference. Spike sticking out. <laughs> okay, now to put the final two sheets, each two and two, with some more resin and hardener. Then I'll finally sand it all the way down, but it sanding came out pretty good. I think it'll actually turn out pretty well. So I'm going with the bristles and the woven fiberglass sheets this time. I don't know that or this, uh, I don't know what you even call this stuff that's just kind of matted together. So I just got to wet it back out and then put the sheet over and then wet that back out. Then fill it in. All right, now to go for some of the filler. I put the 410 micro light and the, what is it? 406 Colorio Silica to really thicken it up and some white pigment. So yeah, just to fill in these sections here and get it all smooth. I put a lot of the stuff in. I really don't want it to sag like it has been doing. So I think this should be good. So now just to sand down these ribs, clean it up a little bit, and then just do a paint, fiberglass paint over it. So, and then calling it done. Okay, I got to put the sandpaper on.
All right, so I have this epoxy paint. I use this in the front of the camper too. So it's whatever I have left from last year. So I'm gonna paint it up real quick. Honestly, I'm probably doing this too late in the evening. It's gonna get colder tonight. But, do a second coat tomorrow. All right, so I think I'm calling it done. I was gonna do a third coat. Maybe I will once I peel this tape off, sand it down on the edges a little bit and do a little touch-ups here and there, but I honestly think I'm done. I'm kinda over it. So let's see how it looks. Quite <laughs> the contrast. Shit. Very clearly painted and weird, <laughs> but it's good. I think I'm happy. I'll clean it up a little bit, but I'm calling it good. Okay, now to remove the backing plate. Hopefully this isn't all stuck. I'm a bit afraid. <laughs> oh, there we go. So yeah, fiberglass resin does not stick to parchment paper. One successful thing in this mission. <laughs> Alright, cool. So yeah, it definitely turned out good. I mean, it could have been, it could look a little smoother and it'd be ideal if the paint matched, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching this far. Uh, next week, we're going to do a trip up to Vermont. And I'm gonna I'm about to change the oil and toss in a new air filter. And I'm gonna use some AMS oil this time. I like really went out and purchased top notch stuff. Hopefully it helps with my oil consumption and we'll just see. But yeah, I gave a little review on that and just the overall mileage and how I'm doing with the fuel economy and stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully it turns out good too on that video. So stay tuned. Thanks again.